students from Ballerine Secondary College, working together to discover the pros and cons of the dredging of the Port Phillip Bay. The main concern that we felt necessary in our local community was the dredging. Together we worked as a team to dig deeper on our dredging project. The dredging occurred from February 2008 to August 2009. The dredging gives container ships access to Melbourne's port but costs approximately $969 million. The dredging should boost exports and trade and should keep the economy stable for the future. Even though the dredging will help the economy, many people believe that it will harm the environment. We can fit more boats into the port of Melbourne, which means more imports and exports for our local community. Well, I've always uh, thought that if you could do this environmentally safely, that it was the, we, we did need to do the project, because the port of Melbourne is a really significant economic driver for Victoria, with a lot of thousands of jobs involved, so if we could do it safely and the EES uh, showed that we could do do that safely, the environmental effects statement, yep. then I supported the project going ahead. Yeah. What environmental impacts will the dredging have? We know the dredging's now all completed, so um, throughout the project, there, um, we, before we started the project, we did an environmental effects um, study and, and a supplementary one as well, and that, that said to us that there would be not that there would be no damage, but there would be minimal damage and that the bay would um, regenerate again. Uh, so in all the, since the project started, there's been regular environmental monitoring of the bay and it's, you know, there, although there have been some small issues around how the rocks fell and scouring in the, particularly in the, the rip in the entrance to the channel, um, that at the moment what it's showing is that there's uh, regeneration of that area pretty quickly after the dredging happened. So, so there have been quite small environmental impacts which don't look like they're going to be long term. The, with the, this dredging what it will enable is more larger ships with um, uh, more containers to be able to broad, be brought in. So at the moment about 2 million containers come into the Port of Melbourne each year. Yep. In about 20 years that will now be about 8 million. Um, so economically it will continue to grow. It's the largest um, port in terms of economic activity in Australia so it will mean that it will keep that, that role and cr continue to create um, a, lot of, uh, a lot of jobs in the area. So economically I think it will continue to thrive. Um, environmentally, given that we can now bring, we'll, we'll be able to bring in the larger ships um, to capacity. At the moment, we've got the smaller ships and only often half full because we can't because of the depth issue. Um, it should mean that, in fact, overall you have less of an environmental footprint from the ships that come in because you can have less of them um, while still carrying and delivering more containers in and in and out of the port. Are there any side effects caused by the dredging? Um, well, there's probably, um, you know, as I, I said earlier, there's been some small impact on um, sponges. Oh, I didn't quite say that, but mm -hmm. from the scouring of, in the entrance, mm -hmm. some of the sponge life. But yeah. in the recent tests that were done since um, the um, dredging of the uh, entrance um, was completed, most of those areas have regenerated already. Um, with some of them a bit slower than we had hoped, but, that, but there are good signs that that will happen. So I'd, we don't see that there's going to be long-term side effects, so the, those short-term issues should be resolved pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, and there's probably the other, there's probably a positive side effect that's come out of some of the sediment. So in, in all of this, um, and I think you've got a question on this, so I'll just add it in, because one of the side effects that, positive side effects has been in the um, sediment collection, which is about 23 million cubic metres of sediment that's been taken through the whole dredging process, a lot of that included contaminated sediment in the Yarra. Yep. Now, all of that sediment's now been removed and in a contained area. Um, so 
So the positive side effect it should mean that the Yarra itself is actually healthier than it was prior to the prior to the dredging process. The evidence so far um, is that it's had very little, if any. Uh, but one needs to look at this over a, a lifespan, uh, not just today or tomorrow. And my understanding is that the controls that have been put on this project will continue to be measured and uh, monitored uh, for, for a number of years. I'm not too sure how many years it is. I think it might be over 10. I think it's terribly important that it's just not something that we know happened today and we turn our backs on what may happen from there. <laughs> Lots of different species in the bay, and most of them are unique, and they only they only can function in certain conditions. Yep. And also, if if they if those conditions never happen again, then they won't have anywhere to go because they're only adapted for the bay. You just got to do what you think's best, because in the end, your your opinion to you is the only thing that matters. You, you can you can always change it, but as long as you think that you're doing the right thing and that you actually are, you can always change people's awareness and perception, and just don't give up on what you're doing. Thank you. 